Eco students, uh, Eco 102, microeconomics. Okay, this is video three of three for this chapter, or for this week, week six. So make sure that you uh, chime into week, uh, week six, video one of three, video two of three, and now we are on video uh, three of three, which we will look at chapter 15. So in chapter 13, we talked about cost of production. Um, and then your next step was to watch the different types of competition video link. Then watch the second video, which is chapter 14. And now in chapter 15, what we see is something called a monopoly. All right, so monopoly is a firm that is the sole seller of a product without close substitutes. Most of you have heard of an, a monopoly and this is no surprise to you, right? Now, what do you think might be some of the differences between a monopoly and a perfectly competitive marketplace? Well, in a perfectly competitive marketplace, everybody's a price taker, right? And so what we see, if you were looking at the slides in the first slide or slide three, it starts to talk about market power where there's a monopoly. There's no market power when you're in a perfectly competitive marketplace. And if you if you look at that X and Y axis that was in the video link, you will see that they are, a monopoly is way down in the zero range, right? Or one range, whereas from a, uh, both are, there's low differentiation though, but it depends on how you think about differentiation because a monopoly is its only player. So couldn't think about it either way. Regardless, you have many buyers, many sellers. So the something called Adam Smith, and I think the text uh, touches on this, this idea of an invisible hand, right? That it's almost like there is a play going on or there's teams being played that nobody really can set the price, right? It's a group of all these sellers, all these buyers, and the price kind of takes on a life of its own in an unfettered marketplace. Now, um, which means, which is good, right? It's It settles at some spot that is, you know, um, is that buyers and sellers can agree upon. They're both like, well, it's not perfect, but we we agree at this price, right? Whereas in a monopoly situation, um, what we have is a firm that has market power. So the firm is the bully in this situation, right? It can do what it wants when it comes to buyers. And so uh, in a competitive situation, the firm cannot do that, does not have market power. And so, you know, that is really the drawback in many instances. And, um, Many economists agree, some do not, that a monopoly is a bad situation because the monopoly really is like a bully when it comes to what it wants to sell and at what price it wants to sell and at what level of quality, right? So there are a few barriers to entry, um, why monopolies uh, arise or come to be. One would be a single firm owns a key resource. Uh, the second would be a government gives a single firm exclusive right to produce uh, a good. And the third would be something called a natural monopoly, where a single firm can produce at such a good rate that no other firm can get involved, right? And so we see natural monopolies, and those are, in this country, those are regulated. All right, so there are a couple examples of curves here, um, and um, a couple examples of well, a monopoly is a price maker and not a price taker. And then we go into something called price discrimination, right? And this is not what you would think discrimination typically is. It's a little bit, this is when we have different prices for different buyers. And so think of like a movie theater, full price at night, right? But what happens to matinees or movies during the day? Low price. And why would they be a low price? Because they have a very um, specific demographic that they would be selling to. They are selling to uh, stay-at-home moms, college students, people on a fixed income, because people that typically work during those nine to five hours are at work, right? And those would be families that maybe have two incomes and those that could afford the full price movies in the evening. So price discrimination is something that is same with motel rooms or hotel rooms. Certain areas that it is the peak season, that is the most expensive time to be at that hotel room. If you are going to Myrtle Beach, right? The most expensive time is to go during the summer months between Memorial Day and Labor Day. So any hotel room, any house you would rent, everything would be at the most expensive price. If you were to rent a room or a house in, say, November, the price would be a lot less because it's not because it is not a peak season time. And so this goes back to that willingness to pay idea from consumers and producers.
And there are a few other examples of uh, price discrimination for you to look through. And then also uh, in this chapter, we go into what are some of the public policies that towards monopolies, right? And towards uh, these the idea of antitrust laws, right? They are set into place, Sherman Antitrust and Clayton, to not only break up monopolies, but to really um, stop any anti-competition -comp uh, or any monopolistic, we'll say, behavior by companies, right? Whether they're uh, getting together with other companies or they're somehow uh, acting in a bully-like uh, fashion. And so what, uh, there's a conclusion here that in the real world, a pure monopoly is rare, right? But yes, some firms have market power and so those firms are actually watched fairly closely. And also when we have something like an oligopoly and only a few firms operating, are those, would those firms be allowed to merge or uh, join forces? The government in this country typically steps in and says, no way, right? Um, all right, so if you have questions about, then there's the summary sheets here. So make sure that you review some of the ideas about, we're touching base here on chapter 15 uh, relative to monopolies. This is video three of three, week six, um, your homework, 13, 14, 15, 16, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, all five. Um, I am having that. You can start working on that this week, but it is not technically due till the end of week seven. There's also a discussion board for these five chapters uh, if you have questions. And as always, you can reach out to me, C. Robertson at ec3pa.org, or uh, shoot me a text 814-490-6473. Thank you.